I'll read the background story. The word of the Lord tells us, Jesus said when, uh, when he came, uh, he reminded the people that uh, the scripture said uh, Elijah must first come before he came. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the God. And so we're going to look at Elijah and some types of Elijah because guess what? Elijah still got to come before Jesus comes back. And guess who Elijah is? Every last one of us in here, okay? So the ministry that's called for of the day is the Elijah ministry. Amen. Amen. So let's read a little bit about Elijah. Uh, <laughs> In the 17th chapter of, of well, before we do that, actually, I, I'll, I'll ask you uh, when we go back home to maybe pick up from the 11th chapter and read on up to that, and we get an idea of how things work. But let's start at 16, uh, verse uh, 30, chapter 16, verse 30, and read a little bit of the story. Do we have some volunteers for reading? Give me about two or three volunteers ooh, ooh, ooh. for reading. All right, Pastor John, anybody else? All right, uh, uh, Sister, uh, see, she's been gone to college a few months now. Prolition. <laughs> Prolition. <laughs> okay, Pastor John, would you uh, pick up and start at verse 30 of chapter 16? And read with your loud preacher voice. Yeah, First uh -huh. Kings 17, right? Huh? First Kings 17? First Kings, we're going to start at 16, verse 30. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. And it says, And Ahab, the son of Omari, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all mm -hmm. that were before him. And it came to pass if, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethabal, king of the Zidians, and went and served Zidonians, mm -hmm. and went and served Baal and worshiped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In this day, in his days, did he held the Bethlehemite build Jericho? He laid the foundation thereof, and Abraham, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof, and his youngest son, Sigur. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Okay, hold it right there. And so <clears throat> we see that uh, this scripture uh, takes place in a time where people were doing everything they were big enough to do. Mm -hmm. Does it remind you of anything uh, in our time? Yes, it does. Because they were doing whatever and uh, they wanted to do. And it seems as if that's where we are today. Uh, you know, um, later on, the book of Judges uh, say there was no king in Israel at that time and people did what was right in their own sight. And that's what happens when God stops becoming king in, in our sight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so we see that uh, uh, Elijah is going to come on the scene at a time when uh, uh, Ahab, the, uh, the king of Israel, was very, did very, very, very worse than anybody else. Okay? And set up all kind of idolatrous things. And uh, <clears throat> and so then, but the Lord raises up, you know, a standard. Amen. Amen. And when uh, uh, when the enemy comes in like a flood, Hallelujah. God always raises up a, a standard. Yeah. And the standard comes up through his people. Amen. Amen. And so uh, now uh, we're going to ask uh, the next reader to pick up in the uh, 17th chapter, first verse. So it looks like Elijah just appears on the scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so you want to stand up and read it? So yes, man, come on, <laughs> be shy, come on. So 
All right, you volunteer to read. Stand up, you're a good reader. Amen. <laughs> we'll help you for all those with all those hard words. <laughs> <laughs> and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be it said, uh, they call him uh, Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead. And, uh, but there is uh, not really, it's only speculation about where uh, Elijah comes from. When we study it out, it seems like uh, he might be from the tribe of Manasseh. I don't know, but uh, most of the scholars can't agree. It's like he just appeared on the scene. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But he appeared on the scene uh, with, he didn't have any notoriety, but he appeared on the scene with a powerful word. Mm -hmm. He appeared on the scene saying, what about the rain? There shall not be due nor rain these years, but according to my word. All right. There shall not be due nor rain these years, but according to my word, said Elijah. And so that's some strong stuff in there because uh, Elijah had a sense of who he was. Amen. And when we recognize, when we, when we, when we uh, uh, represent the king of kings, the one who made the universe, the first thing we have to do is realize who we are. Amen. 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 And uh, I understand that uh, this is, uh, you know, faith, uh, Bible Institute, increasing our faith, uh, getting strengthened in our faith. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to get strengthened in our faith. The Lord led me to go where we really, you know, are going to be strengthened in our faith. And he has sent me with a challenge uh, to us because um, the Bible tells us that the earth is groaning for the sons of God to take their place in the earth. So here we have Elijah, a prophet, that shows up acting like he is the son of the king of kings. Amen. And the first thing we have to do in faith is realize that we are sons and daughters of the one who made the earth. Yeah, and when amen. we speak for him, he backs up what we say. Amen. 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 The first thing is that we don't speak for ourselves, but we have to hear him and speak for him. So I'm challenging us, amen, amen. praise God, is to have faith in God and start acting like we believe that he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Yeah. And all of the stuff that's happening around us, uh, I know we have been praying in our prayer group, strategy to deal, um, okay, sit down a minute, baby, to deal with, sit down a minute. We have been praying for strategy uh, on our pastors and leaders prayer line. Uh, to ask the Lord to give us the strategy to deal with all of the violence and stuff that's happening in our community. And as I was studying this, Jesus said, okay, I gave you all the strategy. The strategy has not changed. Amen? Amen. And it's, uh, we find it just about in the back of uh, all of the gospel. Amen. Amen. If we look at Matthew 28, 19, and 20, what does it say? Go and do what? Make disciples. Make disciples. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's the strategy that Matthew reveals to us. Yeah. And then if we go to Mark, uh, let's read what it says around in, uh, those last verses of uh, Mark. Because we're going to find an example here. In this study. Mark 15, 16 is the last chapter in Mark. And what does he say there in Mark uh, 15, 16? I'm about to go there and read it. Praise the Lord. Mark 15, 16. Mark 15, 16. In his name, oh, be be ba those be baptized. Those that all shall be commanded in my name, you will cast okay, out Okay, go into names. all the world and preach the good news to every create to all the creation of every creature. It says, I'm using the New King's version tonight. 
And then what it says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And, and then look what he says, and these signs will follow those who believe. All right? Are we believers in here? Yes. He says, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Yes. They will speak with new tongues. Yes. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything, any de anything deadly, it will by them. no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Hallelujah. Okay, that's the strategy that's right. that Mark reports. All of basically reports the same thing. And then if we turn over to Luke. What's happening? We turn over uh, to Luke. Uh, I'm looking. Uh, looking at the last uh, chapter here. Tells them about uh, uh, suffering and look, but that's not the one that I want. Are written so that they may continue to believe 
that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. Amen. 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 So Jesus had uh, left us strategy number one. He said, uh, believe. Know that he is who he says he is. That God sent him to do what he did. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, um, we're going to go back to 1 Kings and Elijah in a minute. But, Paul uh, says at a place that before the foundation of the world, that Jesus was slain. Amen. Amen. Jesus came here as a little baby just to walk out mm. what God had already done even before he laid the foundation of the earth. Amen. And in our lives, in each one of our lives, that he has put a thought. It didn't just come in our mind. Amen. God had a plan for each one of us before the foundation of the world. And he starts us to move it toward that. The beginning is to believe that he is who he says he is. Amen. And he sent Jesus as an example to help us believe. Thank you, Lord. Um, the last scripture we read in John, it said Thomas uh, believed. Jesus knew that Thomas had some doubt. And uh, Thomas hadn't seen him when he appeared in other places. That's where he told Thomas, okay, come in, touch me and feel me. Mm -hmm. Stick your hand in the mm -hmm. hole in my side so that you will really know. And Thomas, when he saw, he really got it because he said, my Lord and my God. Uh, that was a real confession that Thomas made, that he understood uh, that Jesus was the same as God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And um, so, but Jesus says, blessed are those who see and believe. Some of us, we struggle behind like Thomas because we have got to depend on our flesh before we can get the revelation. But Jesus says, more blessed are those who can believe without seeing, amen, because uh, if we receive the light that Jesus brings, then we are going to believe, amen. amen. I was uh, laying in bed uh, last a few weeks and I began to notice there is a, a, a light um, a fan thing with a, a, a light <laughs> above our bed, amen. And uh, when I wake up in the morning, it's like the fan has uh, uh, four or five blades. I think it has five blades. But when I look at it at a certain point, I can only see three of the blades. Okay, I can't see the other blade. I know that it's there because when the light is on, I see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was laying there today. I went to try to take a nap today. And I was looking up, I said, that is really interesting. You look a certain way at that fan, and it doesn't look like it has but three blades. You can't see the rest of the blades, right? Mm -hmm. And I laid there, and I looked like this, and I looked. I said, that is really, really something. And, and the Lord says, that's the way it is with some people about Jesus. You know, until you really receive the light in your heart, mm -hmm. the uh, the things that tells us about him is just like types and shadows or something. Yeah. I know that that fan is supposed to have another blade, but I have to turn on the light in order to be able to see the, the, the ceiling is white and the blades are white. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I know that there is a blade there. It's just like we know there has to be a creator but if we're depending on our eyes to see it, I say, isn't that something? Jesus say, yeah, that's the way some of you all are. You know, uh, or you just, you know that the things there have sent all kind of types and shadows, and, and you could barely see the shadow of that blade. But I say, well, Lord, that's really, really something. And, uh, but he wants us to know when we believe 
uh, when we really receive him, then we come to a place of knowing. Now, uh, we're going to rush on because we're not going to be here all night. Now, let's uh, finish. Where's my Elijah reader? Stand up again, baby. And Alicia. Uh, <clears throat> so we read seven. Uh, we read uh, seventeen one. Would you read that again? And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel is, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor, dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. All right, and read the second verse. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get you hence, and turn you eastward, and hide yourselves by the brook chair that is before Jordan. Hmm. And it shall be that you shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Mm -hmm. All right. He commanded the birds wow. to go steal some food off of Ahab's plate, probably, <laughs> and bring it to Elijah. Right. See, uh, God, when he tells us to do something, he has got all of the details worked out. Yeah. Lord, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And so he tells us, uh, okay, Go hide yourself, mm -hmm. all right? Because they're going to be coming after you. You stand up and make uh, uh, a declaration like that. They are going to be coming after you. Amen? The devil's people are going to be coming after you. Mm -hmm. And so, but the Lord is leading Elijah all the way. Everybody else probably thinks he's stone crazy for saying something like that. <laughs> uh, so go ahead, read a little further. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook chair that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. <coughs> and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get, get you to Jerusalem. <laughs> which belongs to Dragon, is well there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain me. So he arose and went to Jerusalem, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray you, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray you, a, mor a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have not a cake, hmm. but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hmm. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as you have said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it to, unto me, and after make for you and for your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the fruit of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sends a rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Praise God. Amen. Hold up Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, <clears throat> the Lord who made heaven and earth, he owns everything in the earth, and he knows exactly where he has something stashed for you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So he gives Elijah uh, a directive. Elijah follows his directive, and the rest is on God. Mm -hmm. And then he guides him all the way where he's going to eat, where he's going to drink. And he knows when one place dries up that he has provided something in another place. Mm. This widow woman thought that she's going to eat the last that she had. But then... The, because she obeyed God mm -hmm. and shared with the prophet, Obedience. 
the Lord sustained her and her son and him, mm -hmm. and they ate for many days for as long as they needed to. Amen. Amen. And so the challenge to us today is to believe God. That's basically what happened to Elijah, is that he believed God. And it's not going to say, not, not necessarily going to be that it'll go along with our thinking. But how do we get to the point where we believe God like Elijah did? How do we get to that point where we believe him? And um, have a seat, baby. Let me, let me just throw that out before uh, we go on with this story. How many of us have uh, read or heard of the story of Elijah before? Okay. It's a good sermon topic. Many, most people have touched on it uh, at one time or another. Amen? Amen? But how do you think that we get to that point that we have enough faith to do outlandish things like that for the Lord? Okay. All right. What does it mean to step out on faith? You come to a point where you go up both ends and say, I can no longer do it. So, it's up to you. so you come to the end of your cell phone? <laughs> When I was um, working for uh, the Census Bureau, I had to go in and out of people's homes. And I went into this man house one day, and he um, told me that uh, his lights hadn't been working for seven days. Mm -hmm. And I stepped out on faith and said, let there be light. And the light came on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's the praise the Lord. Praise oh, God. Mm -hmm. Amen. God yeah. No, oh, it, it was his word. Yeah. One of the first things he said was, let there be light. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that come to you? Was it just spontaneous? Uh, what were you thinking before you pronounced that? I just said it. <laughs> I think it just came to me. Just let okay. there be light. Okay. I was just sad. Right. Anybody else have an example they want to share? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> okay, well, we're going to go on and um, uh, and finish uh, this part because this is relaying the foundation name for uh, the next time because um, the challenge is that God woke up some Elijah's right now. Amen. 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 You might not think. Uh, you have enough nerve to do what Elijah uh, did. But God wants some Elijah's uh, awakened mm. in here. Amen. 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 We've heard his, uh, his strategy, go and make disciples. And he wants us, that's the job of the church, is to go and make disciples. Um, and so we usually come in and we believe ourselves and, and we get comfortable and maybe we try to invite somebody to come in and join the church. 
and uh, but there's not really a whole lot of disciples in the church at large. Amen. Amen. And this strategy is for us to go and make disciples. Amen. All right. So uh, let's read on. Read on a little bit. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, what have, I, what have I to do with you, O you man of God? Are you come unto, unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said unto her, give me your son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a log where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by killing her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray you, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Then Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is true. Amen. 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 God backs up his word. Amen. And so when we obey and speak his word, then sometimes we just fit at the point where there seems to be there. Uh, or do we challenge God like Elijah did when we've done something that he's told us to do? And uh, the challenge comes with something uh, really bad or something evil happening to us. Do we just give up at that point? Elijah is showing us the example that when we follow the word of the Lord, that that's not what God told him, that the widow would lose her son for helping him. Amen. No, uh-uh, he doesn't act that way. But, you know, sometimes we just, we accept what the enemy has brought upon us hmm. rather than to take it back to the Lord and uh, say, Lord, I can't receive it. You know, uh, I heard a testimony of a lady uh, once. Uh, I was down in Nassau at Miles Monroe's ministry. And uh, this lady, uh, her uh, child is named uh, Elisha. She's a girl. And uh, she carried the child for nine months, went to the hospital, and had the baby, and the baby was still born. Mm -hmm. And the doctors uh, gave their condolences and all of that, and she said, give me my baby. And she took the baby, and she held the baby up, and she said, in the name of Jesus, you live, Elisha. And the baby started <laughs> mm. Amen. Praise she God. Praise not, the I Lord. mean, it had taken her some doing to even get to the point to have a baby. Yeah. And then the baby was going to be stillborn. She said, oh, no. And, and she spoke life into the baby, and mm, the baby mm, came mm. alive. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. And, and, and she was saying that uh, one day she got to take uh, a trip. And it was a place where Elijah came from. And uh, the Lord just, uh, you know, did something further in her. But, um, but we have the right. When it seems like the enemy has messed up the plan that God gave us, mm -hmm. we have the right to say no. Stand up and say no. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And so if we do that, then that's the Elijah that God has in us. God has that kind of faith in everyone who will believe. Amen. Yes, amen. Each one of us have been given a measure of faith that will take us from point A to point B. Amen. I remember myself, I've shared the story with some people in 1966, right over here in Southeast. I was on my way to Bible study. 
I got off the 94 bus and was living in Parkland. And um, uh, was on my way into the church. There was a man that was on the bus with me. He was doing the heroin epidemic back in the 60s. And there was a man on the bus with me. I had noticed him, but I really wasn't prepared. But I spoke to him the lesson that night and really wasn't prepared. And uh, so anyway, I was just thinking, Lord, how am I going to do this? How am I going to start this? Blah, 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 blah. And uh, as I'm walking along thinking, I am aware of some hurried footsteps behind me. But my mind is totally on the fact of what am I going to do? <laughs> and uh, so the man comes up behind me and he grabs me, he puts one hand over my mouth and grabs my arms with the other. They had been snatching purses at the time. And so the first thing I did was when I grabbed it, it took me about 10 seconds, I think. What's that? This man had grabbed me. Oh, no, he won't. And I threw my purse on the ground. If he wanted that, he could have picked it up and run. But no, he's trying to drag me someplace. And, uh, but when I decided that I would fight, when I said, oh, no, there were angels there to help me because I'm not a particularly strong woman in strength. But when I said no, and I went to pull that man's hand away from my mouth, his hand felt like a feather. And so then he'd have to take his other hand and clamp my arms, and we were like this. And it was no effort to me. And finally, a man came around that little corner and said, leave her alone. And then he said, get the H on me, and so and so. And the man said, is that your husband? I said, no, I don't know him. And, but that gave him a running start. And he ran off. So when I went in the church, and the pastor was in there, and the Sunday school superintendent, they heard the screaming. But they thought it was some children out there playing, so they didn't come to check them out. Hmm. And when I went in, it was uh, really something. And, and what happened in our church at that time, right over here in Southeast, it really scared the people because I was about the third one. I was the first one that was grabbed. Some other women had had their first snatch coming into church. And uh, except Miss Mary Green, because somebody put a gun to her ear one night and she slapped the gun away and the guy took off running. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but then, uh, when the man uh, grabbed me and the word went around the congregation, uh, the people said, oh, we have to stop coming here at night. And I got up before the church and I begged them, please do not do that. Nothing happened. You know, the Lord. And, and, but they stopped having Bible study. They stopped having prayer meetings. And, every, and, it, and, it, and it was about, it was years before it started again. But that's what the enemy wants to do. Because the, that's why he picks on the church. Because as long as the church is praying and listening to God, then God has us where he wants us in the earth. Amen? And I want to tell you, ain't nobody never, my, my husband said, you don't need to be over there in Southeast. I said, look, the Lord proved himself to me. And I'm not going to uh, uh, act stupid and not be cautious. But I do whatever I have to do, morning, noon, or night. Because if God told me to do it, then uh, he has already proved himself. That was 1966. Ain't nobody bothered me since 1966. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And I travel in Southeast. I have all of my work, time, ministry, and everything has been right in Southeast. And so what I'm saying to us tonight is that God is capable of taking care of us if he has told us to do something. Amen. 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 Praise God. So um, anyway, uh, now we're going to move on ahead because who can help me with the rest of the story that you know about Elijah? After a while, the next verse will say God tells Elijah to return uh, to over there in the, uh, the land of Ahab. Who knows what happened next? Okay, the battle at Mount Carmel, right? Amen. So the Lord told Elijah uh, to return and uh, a whole lot of other things. I'm going to give you the assignment to go ahead and read the rest of the 17th chapter 
and uh, we're going to uh, pick up something out of there. I'll have some questions for you next week. But the Lord sent Elijah back to call for rain. He said it wouldn't rain until he said so. And the Lord said it's time to go back. Mm -hmm. And so, but it wasn't just about rain because God wanted to get the attention of the people. It was really all about the idolatry in the land. And that's what God really wanted to challenge. But he needed Elijah's space to go forward to get ready for that challenge mm -hmm. so that uh, he was really after the people's heart. And in all of the things that happened, you know, we could have real cold spell coming along here. And all of the things that happened, God is always after our heart, even to sending his son to come down here and die for us. Thank you, Jesus. So that we would give our heart to him. Because guess what? He wants his children to be with him forever. It's all about him wanting his children to be with him forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And um, so uh, Elijah came and he challenged the uh, prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. And who knows what happened when he challenged them. Okay, y'all are going to He defeated them. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, yeah, we're going to read the rest of the story. Amen. Okay, we're going to read the rest of the story because the 17th chapter ends with God telling Elijah to go back. <coughs> Amen. Amen. So I want you all to go and read the story and, um, and be ready for next week because guess what? Here is what? The reason we are looking at the story of Elijah. Uh, let's um, go over here to uh, the book of James. This is the whole point. James. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to, uh, let's see, where is it? Where is it? The verse where it says the sexual fervor prayers of the righteous mm -hmm. avail as much. This is James 1, 17. Do you have it, Pastor? Would you pronounce the chapter and read it? I have it written down.
to become effectual in our prayer. Amen. Amen. And effectual uh, means effectual fervent prayers. <laughs> They say this old, uh, outdated name, you know, the dictionary has a way of changing things according to uh, how it's used in the land. But it used to mean, which to me is still used, mean that it's some fire to it. Mm. Amen. Amen. Fervent means it's got some fire and some power. Amen. Yeah. But uh, as I went to look up the word uh, in the concordance, they said, uh, it's outdated that they don't use it. Well, what what fervent means is that uh, you got to put some action to it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes, we pray without ceasing, but effectual means that is something strong. Is something with action. Mm -hmm. Go home and look that word up in your concordance because it means it's got some strength behind it. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's what uh, effectual means. And and fervent means it's got some heat dealing with it. That's what it used to mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good good example, Sister Ellen. Bring some up to a boil. Okay, Amen. that's fervent heat. Then mm -hmm. uh, my husband is always fussing at me. Why you turn this fire up high, this stove up high, and walk away? And then sometimes the stuff boil out in the pot. It's like, <laughs> and Lord, I ask you to stop doing that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just want to share this definition here. It says. Uh, Exactly. You pray expecting results. And guess what? We just can't sit down and pray. Amen. Amen. We on our prayer line have been praying, as I said earlier, for strategy to deal with what's happening to us for two years now. Amen. The Lord said to us one time about two years ago, shout, I've given you the city. And I was sharing that as I was announcing this uh, Bible study at our last uh, Southeast clergy meeting. And while I was sharing it, the Lord said, yes. I told uh, Joshua and those to march around the wall and shout. He said, but I only knocked the walls down. They had to go in and take the city. He said, it's time for y'all to take the city. Amen. 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 And we will take the city when we reach out to the ones uh, around us. <coughs> And um, you know what? If they need healing, pray for healing. And uh, just like uh, Denise said, as she went, Pastor Denise said she went to that man's house and said, "Let there be light." There was light. Yes, okay. Uh, that man had some uh, faith in God to raise up. Then his mm. lights had been out so long. Amen. 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 So we have got to number one: be attentive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and I am challenging us, even between now and next week, whomever the Lord might tell you to speak to in your goings and comings, mm. especially, you know, around here. I know y'all have been having some trouble with uh, people using your parking lot in a way they're not supposed to use it. Amen. Uh, maybe we need uh, to get some names and uh, minister uh, some salvation prayer to see what they need. Uh, Amen. 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 Uh, uh, I heard that down here uh, on the corner uh, uh, at Atlantic Prayer, uh, the uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right down there, that the nice new building that was built down there. Uh, businesses, uh, Apostle, what's his name, the Shepherds, uh, they were at the meeting the last time and they said people are, uh, they're having a hard time keeping businesses in there because the people hang all out around there and not many people want to come in there. Well, it's time for the churches in the community to go down there and see if we can minister some salvation right. to some of those people. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So anyway, uh, 
I think uh, we have gone long enough. Your assignment is to uh, go ahead and finish reading the story of Elijah and what Jezebel uh, threatened to do. And, um, and then uh, I want to challenge you if God gives you an opportunity, and I feel that he will, because I have set a celebration date for January the 20th. That's what I want for a birthday present. My birthday is coming up. I'll be 75 on the 22nd. And for the 20th, I am believing God that we, uh, we, we I've got the date on y'all's calendar, and we're going to invite you and all the people that you have ministered to, and somebody is going to give their heart to the Lord and want to start to be a disciple because what we're going to do, we're going to celebrate the life of Christ. Amen. On January 20th. So that's what I want for my 75th birthday. Amen. Amen. So I'm challenging everybody here. God is going to point somebody out to you to witness something, whether you pray for that healing or uh, whatever he tells you to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Jesus said we need some boots on the ground if we are going to change the situation around us. So that is my challenge to you. Amen. Uh, are there any questions about that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. One of my um, members in my church mm -hmm. has been on the sick list. So they said I know very little. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think it was Friday. Uh, I was sitting there and I, I called several people and when I called her, she says, oh, I know there is a God. She said, I know there is a God. <laughs> she said, because I was sitting here feeling sorry for myself. She found out she had uh, lung cancer. Mm -hmm. She said, I was feeling sorry for myself. She said, I've never smoked and never been around anyone who that smoked. She said, um, but I'm so glad that you called me. She told me somebody else had called her just before I did. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, I know, I know, I know. And then she said, will you pray with me? Praise God. And to tell you the truth, I did not know that I was going to be asked to do that. And I was just called, I did not think that there was going to be news like that. But I prayed with her. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she said, uh, pray with me, because you let me pray. And it's amazing sometimes when other people see in you that you don't see in yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't. I mean, I can pray, but it's not like. I mean, that someone would just say that. So anyhow, I did pray with her, and I so you know, I'm still lifting her. I have not called her again, but I do need to mm -hmm. give her a call. Right. And she's a real strong uh, Christian. Uh -huh. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's an example of all of the opportunities that God provides for us. Uh, we of uh, somebody uh, that we have ministered to, even in school. We're so glad to have uh Monte here with us tonight. Amen. Praise God. And uh all of our peoples from Saving Souls Deliverance Ministry. Uh, Pastor the name, Pastor John. Thank you all know we had faith there over there with church in that house in Lincoln Heights. And um, we're so glad uh, that they have come along. Well, somebody else will be next week. And Sister Harold, we're so glad to have her. Uh, she's uh, regular on the uh, prayer line. And uh, she's not a stranger to faith. Uh, from um, Jericho City of Praise, it's her church. So we are so grateful, and Mr. Pepper is over there. Where do you belong in Southern Friendship? <laughs> Missionary Baptist Church, amen. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>